Great. Well, good evening, Simon, and good evening to uh, all the, I don't know, are, they, are you listeners or viewers? I'm not sure these days. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to be talking to everybody again. And I think uh, most of you did attend, well, well, I can't be sure for, uh, but most of you would have attended last year. Uh, so I have changed the presentation slightly this year. So there's an entire section which I've taken out and people can can go and visit last year's presentation. And the reason I've done that is just so, firstly, I could review some of the calls that we made last year. And then also that I could just expand on what I've come to realize is a, an important issue to address when it comes to investing in broad-based B shares. And that's the expected return profile. Um, it's, it's an issue that uh, a lot of investors seem to, to struggle with. Then I'll go into the uh, various schemes that are available at the moment, and then we'll open for, for Q&A. So just by way of introduction, Gradage Mohuri Investments, we are a diversified in investment advisory and wealth management business. So we don't actually sell BE shares, as some people think we do um we we give advice so the the story of gmi is very strongly connected to uh broad-based be shares because it was the results of the first mtn scheme mtn asonge uh which uh, resulted in a, a conversation between myself and kakisha my business partner um and, and we were wondering why does that such a, an, an attractive and lucrative scheme uh, only got a, a few investors or relatively few investors investing. So we had both independently applied for the maximum number of shares that we could get. And we were surprised to, to get full allocation. And that was because, you know, the scheme was marginally oversubscribed. And we just felt that the, you know, something was amiss, and after several discussions, we we decided, and we we, we realized, looking at industry statistics, that um, uh, the advice that people were getting was was coming from a place that, you know, the average advisor in South Africa was white, fifty-five years old, uh, Afrikaans speaking, and male. Um, so, so that's why we started the business and yeah, we, we didn't get our timing right. We, we started in 2008 in the middle of the, the financial crisis, um, but we survived and today we have over 1,500 individual corporate and clients, uh, corporate and individual clients around the country and manage just, just over 1.9 billion of, of client money. Uh, just a few accolades that we've achieved along the way. So in 2018, we won Top Wealth Manager of the Year on our 10th birthday, something of a fairy tale, uh, to be honest. And yeah, we won, we dominated the awards that evening. Uh, won Top Wealth Manager for lump sum investors, young professionals, and People's Choice. Uh, People's Choice is a, effectively a client satisfaction uh, survey. And yeah, people's choice in the six years we entered, we either finished first, second or third. And yeah, we were ranked the second. So they changed the structure of, of that uh, award in 2019. Uh, sometimes one it was after we won it in 2018, but be that as it may. And yeah, 2021, uh, one of our advisors won the top relationship manager. Uh, award. Um, last year, we won Professional Practice of the Year Award. So we won of 14 professional practices in the country. The FPI is our professional body, and they've accredited and approved 14 professional practice practices in the country. We South Africa's only black owned and managed professional practice. Uh, the, the thing we, we're quite proud of is this Masted Seal of Compliance. It, just gives our clients a um, sense of comfort that we run our practice within the requirements of the codes of good practice. 
my apologies. I actually need to update the stamp. We actually got the stamp again for 2021 and 2022. Uh, what this means is that for every audit, all four audits in the year, we've gotten over 85% for, for those audits. Um, yeah, and this was our performance in last year's private bank and wealth manager survey. We didn't enter this year. Uh, we, we decided to focus on uh, the business. The business has been growing and we're opening up new branches. So a lot of internal focus this year. Uh, but a very strong, consistent performance uh, from the business. So showing that we, you know, we've able to give uh, good advice to uh, a wide array of, of clients. And our service offering is uh, split into wealth creation and wealth protection. And there you can see the broad based BE public share offers is, is but one of the things that we do. So th that's, that is the reason we started a wealth management business because there is a financial planning uh, context is a, a balance sheet context uh, in which this investment is made uh, by a client. Um, so it's important that that part is right. Otherwise, people will not benefit fully from these these public share offers because they're not quite ready uh, from a financial planning perspective. Um, but yeah, we we offer a fairly comprehensive. Um, risk management, so that's life disability, insuring income and insuring assets and insuring health, and then estate planning, tax planning, retirement planning and investment planning. So that's just a very uh, quick introduction to GMI and, and what we do. So just to go into uh, today's presentation, I thought it'd be important um, to, to, to review the calls that, some of the calls that we made last year and what i've also done this year is i've i've, I've made a very sp specific um, uh, line item called verdict so when we go through the various schemes i'll give you my verdict uh, and you'll see from from last year's calls that i can get it wrong um, but I, I think the important thing is that you need to get most of your calls right uh, and you'll see that that is in fact the case so last year we, the last year's presentation, Simon, I think was August, middle of August, if I remember correctly. So uh, yeah, this that assumes that had mid August. But, yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. So so this assumes that you invested the next day after, because the presentation was in the evening, and um, yeah, you could have then gone into the market the next day and either bought, sold, or well, accumulate is effectively a buy. Um, but yeah, but Putumanati, the the call was hold um, or buy if you need income. And yeah, had you bought it the next day, you, you would have paid about 146 rand a share, um, and you would have gotten 44 and and 44 cents in dividends, less dividends with holdings tax, um, but yeah, that's the dividends you would have earned and while well, the share price is down by 14 rand a share. So pretty much I think you would have been net of dividend, net of dividends with holdings tax and the share price movement you, you still would have been uh, been slightly up in total. Um, MTN Zakele Futi, the, the view there is accumulate and you'll see there's three shares where we say accumulate and all those three shares have something in common, uh, which is that they still have a gearing effect. So there's a lot of debt on the balance sheet. Um, and a lot of the value will unwind as that debt has settled. So Zakele Futi up marginally from 1960, 19 a share to 21 rand a share when I put the slide together. Uh, Yebu Yetu, um, that one's down. And surprisingly down because um, yeah, that kind of stayed around that 45 rand mark for a long time, kind of fluctuated between uh, sort of 46 at the top end and 40 rand at the bottom end. But you know, they also noticed a big seller coming into the market last week. So that share price has fallen a bit. 
Uh, Zenzele Kabili, that was one of the big calls that we got right. Uh, that was trading at 100 Rand a share. Uh, today it was it's at 47 Rand 49. So about a 52.5% decline in the share price there. And the call was a sell. Sol B1, that's Sassel. There we said buy. Uh, and that was up at trading at 125 Rand a share at the time. Today it's at 172 Rand 50. And you would have received a 14 Rand 70 gross dividend. It's gross of tax. So yeah, the almost well, yeah, almost a 50% increase there. So uh, uh, quite a quite a good performance coming through from from Sol B1, which was only really strong sell a uh, strong buy uh, indicator last year. Then Ukamba one, <clears throat> Ukamba one. Uh, we, we struggled because the financials were outdated, but um, despite that, the analysis suggested a sell because the uh, NAV was, was significantly be, below the, the share, where the share price was trading. Share price was trading at about 39 Rand a share at the time. And with the DP, uh, DP world offer on the table, the valuation was sitting below 15 Rand a share. Um, and then lastly, Ukamba 2, which is invested in motors. Uh, there we said accumulate long term. Uh, that one's down uh, from about 28 Rand a share to 21 Rand a share. They did, they did pay a 1 Rand 60 dividend. Um, so, yeah, that sort of tempers your, your, your loss on that one. So, all in all, a bit of a mixed bag, but I think mostly, I think we, we, we got the calls right. Um, the the big one was Sol B1 because you would have locked in a dividend yield uh, of over 10% or well, over 11%. Um, and it looks like Sassel will be resuming dividends going forward. So what, what I want to do now is just refresh that conceptual understanding of broad-based BE shares that I introduced last year. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, I still come across, um, judging by the queries that I get, uh, people not fully understanding how these shares are funded and, and why you have the sort of price experience that you have. Um, and then I want to extend this concept um, a bit further and explore what that means for your return expectation. Uh, because I think if we can manage return expectations up front, uh, I expect that you will get a lot more investors participating in, in these shares. So just the concept I, I introduced and the explanation I gave was that the funding of broad-based BE shares is very similar to the funding of a buy-to-let property. So if you look at the high level structure, some of the details differ. Uh, there's a lot of sophistication on certain parts of the deal, but in, in your overall structure, it's, it's, it's funded very similarly to a buy to let property. So consider a property that you may want to buy to let. It's got a property value of a million rand. Um, how do you pay for that property? Well, you know, you could negotiate a discount with the seller and say, look, I'll, I'll buy the property, but I want it for 950. And then you take a deposit out of your own pocket of 100,000. And then you get a bank loan for, for the balance of 850,000. So that's, I think, quite a fairly common way of um, funding a buy-to-let property scheme. And we just assume for the sake of an argument that the the monthly, the bank loan would be repaid at 7,000 Rand per month and that you manage to get a tenant and you charge them rental income of 7,500 Rand per month. Okay, so that's, that's the structure of your buy-to-let property. The other thing I've added in there is that it's a fairly admin intensive process. You know, you know, make your offer to purchase, you've got to uh, complete all the paperwork for the bank loan and registering the loan and transfers and the whole lot. 
it's 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 quite a um, an intensive process or admin intensive process at least the same with with your broad based be shares so so you have an empowering company that has a value and it, it's selling a stake in the empowering company and that that stake that they're selling that uh, you know portion of the company that they're selling to black shareholders as a value and that value has to be paid for um, and how it's paid for is often there's some kind of discount offered on the value you inv investors are required to put up their own money that's called the equity contribution and there's there's loan funding that's that's often accompanies these schemes and and that loan funding can either take a form of preference shares or vendor financing or notional vendor financing so that's where it, it, it tends to get a lot more complicated and a lot more you know sophisticated but in essence it's 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 very similar to a a mortgage bond you know it, it's a loan to buy an asset and that loan must be repaid like every like every other loan um but what you get with shares is shares tend to pay dividends and those dividends are used uh, to repay the loan so almost the company itself is is the tenant and that tenant is producing a dividend and just like we've seen with uh, buy to let property, broad based BE share investing is also admin intensive. However, uh, the JSE will be, the JSE investor services will be announcing uh, quite soon that they are launching an initiative that's going to help address uh, particularly the, um, the verification of, of black investors. Uh, which would help with the admin uh, aspect of it. Can't say too much about it because it hasn't been finalized, but it will be launched to the public, uh, I believe, before the year is up. So, so that's quite a positive and it really should assist with that uh, admin intensity and hopefully get more people uh, investing in these shares. So last year we looked at, at how you make money from a broad-based BE, well, sorry, from a buy-to-let property. So again, this is the full extent of my um, PowerPoint skills. So this box represents the value of the asset, a million rand. And that million is made up of your deposit and the discount that you negotiated and the debt. And as you'll see that with buy to let property, what happens is the value of the asset can go up, but you also settle debt uh, as time goes on. So a year later, what you've got is a loan of 800,000. The accuracy of these numbers are not what we're looking at, it's more the concept. And so you've got an 800,000 loan and you've got an asset that's worth 1.1 million. So the difference between the asset value and the liability is 300,000. And this 300,000 is made up of your deposit, the discount, and some value from the property increasing and part of the, the loan repayment. So you'll see that you've doubled your money, your, your equi the equity value has, has doubled in a year, but that's come from various different sources. It's not just the, the value of the property going up. And if you fast forward that seven years later, you'll see that, you know, in this scenario, so the property value has gone to 1.5 million, you've settled about 250,000 of the loan so if you were to sell the property for 1.5 million, settle the loan and minus a couple of expenses, you get out just under 900,000. So your return is the 100,000 that you put down out of your pocket. Um, as, so that's your investment, but you know, your return is, is north of, of 700, 800%, okay? 
So, so that that is why, well, firstly, why buy to let property investing is, is very popular because you get this gearing effect. Uh, but secondly, th this is what you see with, with broad-based BEE shares. So this is the, um, the funding um, model that was applied by MTN Zakele Futi. And yeah, I took, this is a straight copy and paste out of the uh, prospectus. So you'll see there that there was equity um, contribution from the public of 25% of the, the value of the asset. Uh, there were some initial costs. There was a discount that MTN uh, offered to shareholders. And then you had um, debt funding in the form of preference shares and notional vendor funding from MTN. So there's your debt, there's your discount, and there's the equity contribution. And you add that up and that gives you the 9.8 billion that was needed to buy 4.1% of, of MTN. Okay, so the way you make money from broad-based BEE shares is not too different to how you make money from buy to let property. Okay, you get a gearing effect from, from settling the debt and you get a further uplift from the value of the asset increasing over time and your return is, is fairly high because your equity contribution what you take out of your pocket makes up initially a fairly low part of the total value and as you can see the entire loan doesn't have to be repaid for you to make a very good return um, so yeah it's it's important that we understand the re, sort of the how the returns are generated, but also the expected return profile. So I think a lot of investors and potential investors get frustrated because these shares are listed, and they almost expect a similar return profile to the return profile of other listed shares, um, and 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 that you know, is, is, is a bit misplaced because these shares, as I've explained, behave more like buy to let property uh, from a return perspective. Um, so what you find is that your returns are lumpy. So what that means is that you, you get a big part of, a big chunk of your total return tends to happen over a fairly short space of time. And uh, if you think of the buy to let uh, concept, that would happen when you sell the property. If it's not a, if it's a property that has a fairly high yield, typically then your return comes from that yield, which is what you see with Putumanati. You know, so when you buy a property, most most of your properties either fall in one of two buckets, either you it's a high quality property where you're going to get capital growth out of and a low yield, or it's a low quality property where you're going to get very little capital growth, but you're going to get a fairly excessive yield. Um, same with the broad based BE shares. So, because returns are lumpy, you need to be invested for the long term. You can go extended periods where you get low to almost no returns. Uh, and this you see with Putumanati, we've seen this with MTN and Zakele Futi, we've seen this with Yebo Yetu, where you, you have extended periods where these shares are just meandering in a fairly kind of narrow range. Okay. And so it's because of that, that again, uh, you need to be invested for the long term. The returns are also also often back end loaded. So what we what we mean by that is that, you know, if you buy a property today, uh, you'd want to get a, ten, a tenant in there, and then over several years you want to settle as much of the bond as possible. And over those years, you want hopefully the value of the property increases. It's only when you sell that property at the end 
do you then get all your return? And and that's similar with with these broad-based BEE shares, where you know debt is being settled over time, and either the the deal comes to an end or there's some kind of offer put on the table, like there was with Timbeka Capital, and um, uh, what's this thing recently, Ukamba. Um, so those kind of liquidity events often unlock a whole lot of value, more often than not. In the case of uh, Ukamba, uh, there was no value unlocked at the end, but I think that is more to do with the fact that the share price was 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 sort of misplaced. Your your liquidity events, so either the full settling of the debt, scheme maturity, buyout offer, those often result in a fairly high return. So so if you remember Yebu Yetu's first deal. That deal, about 80 to 90 percent of the return you made over 10 years, you made over several days. When when they announced the winding up of the scheme and the introduction of a new scheme, and and all of the um, associated impacts of 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 that, um, that liquidity event resulted in quite a lot of value emerging over a very short space of time. Um, so the net result and what, what the implication of that is that you've got to remain invested for the long term. Um, I, th I think you you kind of get the point that I'm making. Um, so where your returns come from, dividend income, and or capital growth, both require a long term holding period. You know, if you if Putuminati to to really make good returns, you want to hold Putuminati for an extended period because, as you see, you get this 20 rand a share dividend um, every year that comes through, um, which you can then reinvest and, and build out your portfolio. Um, or if it's a year by year two, it's a bit of a slow burn where, you know, it's going to take time. Uh, but once that debt is settled, you're going to have a value unlock that's going to see your returns just shoot through the roof. Um, but to, to, to benefit fully, you need to be invested for, for the long term. So, yeah, I think just to, to end it there and, and to sort of get into the different shares, I think if I can summarize, um, the shares are funded like buy to let uh, property investments in their form, you know, asset uh, funded by equity contribution, discount, and debt. And um, your, your returns are going to be lumpy and back end loaded. But that's going to require, to get the full benefit, it's going to require you to have a long-term investment mindset. So, just, so don't get caught up in, 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 in the short-term noise or be disappointed by sort of short-term underperformance. Um, over time, you'll do well. Okay, so I'm, at this point, I'm going to go into the different schemes and then uh, we'll, we'll take questions uh, at the end. So the first one I'm going to look at is Putumanati. So again, just a reminder, Putumanati is invested in multi-choice South Africa, not the multi-choice group, which is listed on the JSE. Um, they settled debt you know, uh, two years earlier than expected. Uh, so multi-choice South Africa is a highly cash generative business. So they were able to grow dividends a lot faster than expected. Um, and yeah, currently trades in a on a, a dividend yield of 16.8%, um, 13.4% uh, net of dividends with holdings tax. Uh, MultiChoice uh, owns 24.6% of MultiChoice South Africa. We look at the MultiChoice Group market cap, that's 54 billion Rand. Uh, MultiChoice South Africa is the single largest uh, contributor to. Um, multi-choice group, certainly from a profit perspective. Um, so if we 
were to try and extract a value for for Kutumanati and assume some kind of value, I think we could take the same multiple. Um, so 24.6 of the 54 billion gives you an estimated value of around 13.2 billion. Uh, the market cap of multi or Putumanati is currently 8.9 billion. So there's roughly a 30% discount between the net asset value and and the fair value. Um, and the reason there would be a discount applied is because the shares lack liquidity. If you watch last year's presentation again, we actually spend a lot of time on on why there is a liquidity discount. Um, so typically what we do is we calculate the net asset value. We apply a 30% discount to the net asset value to get a fair value. And to that fair value, we would compare the fair value to, to, the, to where the share price is trading and then make a call as to whether that's, that share is attractive or not. And so you can see that Putuminati is trading pretty much close to its fair value. And the verdict is that, again, it's a hold if you, are, if you already bought it. Um, and it's a buy if you're looking for income. Because if you buy a South African government bond, you're going to get a yield of about 10.5%, 11%. That's all subject to income tax. Um, yeah, you're getting a dividend yield of, of over 16.8%. Um, and there you pay a flat dividends with holdings tax. So even after tax, you're coming out at a better yield than a risk-free government bond. So yes, you, you would expect some, some higher uh, a higher yield to to compensate you for the risk of, of multi-choice South Africa, but that is, is, is an excellent yield. MTN Zakele Futi. So Zakele Futi uh, owns 4.1% of the listed MTN group. Um, so that's a value of 9.25 billion. It has a fairly complex notional vendor funding structure where they use Monte Carlo Simulus and, um, uh, to, to calculate uh, the sort of value of the structure. Um, and yeah, it's, it's fairly complicated, but anyway, it's got a, a debt value of 4.9 billion. It gives you a net asset value of, of roughly uh, 3.65 billion. So we've added the other debt um, so there's a preference share debt as well and um, uh, deferred tax liability uh, so that we were a factor in. So that gives us a fair value. So a discount, 30% discount on, on NAV of 2.3 billion, 2.4 billion or 1890 a share. And uh, Zakele Futi is trading just slightly above that about 19 rand, no, sorry, 21 rand a share. Um, so yeah, so the discount to the net asset value is approximately 24%, which is slightly lower than the 8%, I'm mean, sorry, than the 30% discount we normally like to see. And the premium to fair value is about 8%. So yeah, this one's trading slightly more than fair value, but it's not a big number. Um, so the verdict, certainly the, the verdict remains accumulate. So if you think that MTN is going higher and there's a fairly large uh, sort of large number of market participants who, who feel that MTN is undervalued, uh, that would suggest it's a buy, but, but you are buying it at a premium to, to fair value at the moment. At least it's it's a discount to net asset value. So so there's the asset. Sorry, this is worth nine point when this is worth ten point two billion. I needed to update that number. My apologies. There's debt of six point eight billion, which leaves the three point four billion or twenty seven rand a share as as the net asset value. Okay, so that that's a Kelefuti. It's slow geared um, investment. 
So it's one you want to accumulate over time. And the strategy I would apply to Zakele Futi is, you know, if you think you're going to invest a hundred thousand in Zakele Futi over time, don't don't try and get a hundred thousand um, shares as soon as possible. The share price will move. It moves a lot, and that gap or that discount to net asset value and to fair value uh, that appears from time to time. You 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 know it was recently trading at a at a discount to fair value. It's now at a premium to fair value. So in an accumulation strategy, when it's a premium, you 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 won't buy, and when the share price falls, then you you buy a few more again, uh, and just accumulate uh, like that. Yebo uh, Yetu, okay. Yebo Yetu, the asset is is Vodacom, 6.2 percent of Vodacom. So there, that was worth 14.4 um, billion. So debt of 11.2 billion. Which gives us a net asset value at 3.1 billion or 60 rand a share, and a fair value at 42 rand a share. So, with the current share price at 39 rand a share, that it's it's trading at a slight discount to fair value, and a fairly attractive discount to net asset value. So this is this one, unlike uh, multi uh, sorry no, multi choice MT and Zakele. Yebo Yetu does pay a dividend. So with this one, the strategy would be to accumulate. So if you had money today, I would not be buying um, MTN Zakele, Zakele Futi. I would be buying Yebo Yetu because I'd be picking it up at a discount to fair value. But I would also be getting some kind of dividend income out of Yebo Yetu. Whereas, um, Zakele Futi doesn't pay a dividend, and they won't pay a dividend for the for the remaining period of the uh, the uh, eight years, which I think is is two more years to go. So, so again, this this uh, is not a highly um, indebted scheme, um, but. Yeah, still fairly geared. It's I'd say roughly about 70% gearing, which is fairly reasonable. Vodacom is a fairly stable uh, share, you know, sort of low beta to the market. Um, so yeah, this is one I would accumulate. If I had to choose between Yebo Yetu and Zakele Futi, I would go with Yebo Yetu because that's actually a fairly attractive dividend. It's yeah, but it's certainly higher than the dividend yield uh, of the JSC, all Z and top 40. Then Sol B1, which is the Sassel B ordinary shares. So that's a discounted scheme. So one Sol B1 share is effectively equal to one Sassel ordinary share. There's the same voting rights and rights to dividend. However, it can only be traded by by black investors, qualifying black investors. So therefore, you should expect some kind of discount to Sassel. However, the discount is, is high against historical long-term averages. So since the share has been trading, it, it, it's averaged a discount of about 30%. And it's currently trading at a discount of, a roughly, of roughly 40%. Um, it's it's traded at a premium uh, to Sassel at, at some point during the initial COVID crash. Um, so yeah, the, your your value from from Sol B one will will come from that discount. Um, so let's see if I can. Uh, there's a pointer. Okay, that's better. So you'll get a, some some value unlocking from the discount narrowing if it narrows from 40% back to 30%. So that'll be about a 16% return. And then um, as the Sassel share price, you know, continues to recover, yeah, again, many market participants believe it's it's undervalued. 
Um, but then also you, you're able to add on top of that an eight and a half percent dividend yield. Um, and again, there's a, a section of the market that believe that that dividend, the dividend that you got paid, you, you, you could expect uh, higher dividends going forward. So yeah, currently on a 8.5% dividend, if you bought after last year's presentation, you would have locked in a 11.7% dividend, plus you would have gotten 50 rand a share uh, uplift. So the verdict is still a buy. I still think this this one's attractive. Um, it, it still it trades at a 40% discount to, to NAV. And yeah, with, with dividends now being paid and expected to grow, your total return out of Sol B1 could be could be quite attractive um, going forward. Uh, Zenzele Kabili, uh, so this is SA Breweries or AB InBev. So Zenzele owns 4.7 billion worth of uh, Anheuser Busch shares. Uh, those they have debt of 2.6 billion and a net asset value of roughly 52 rand a share. Uh, fair value, so apply a 30% discount to net asset value, you get fair value at 36.50. The share is currently trading at 47.49. Last year when we did the presentation, the share was trading at 100 rand. Um, so yeah, we, we're seeing it at a 10% discount to NAV, no longer premium, but it's still trading at a premium to fair value. But bearing in mind, fair, fair value can disappear quite quickly if the value of the underlying share increases. And we've seen maybe InBev share price increasing quite, quite nicely in the last week or so. Um, so yeah, if we just settle the debt, uh, you could double your money. Uh, but if AB InBev gets to 2,000 rand a share, which is where I think it initially listed, and I was a bush after the takeover. Uh, then you would get a nav of around 187 rand a share, but you would have to factor in um, some capital gains tax for the for the AB InBev share um, going from from where they bought the share, from where Zenzele Kabili bought the share to the 2,000 rand mark. So probably be closer to about 150 rand net of net of uh, that capital gains tax. But again, once you start settling debt, then that value would would shoot up quite quite nicely. So yeah, the verdict on on Senzele Kabili is changes from last year. Where last year was a sell, the verdict on this one is accumulate. Again, accumulate, buy into weakness and um, just build up your position, the posi the total position you want to try and build it up over a period of time. Uh, as you can see with, with these sort of discounts and premiums to nav and fair value, you wouldn't be buying a lot of Zenzele Kabili. You'd probably be accumulating on uh, Yebo Yetu and MTN uh, be more so than Zenzele Kabili, but I would I would start accumulating on Zenzele uh, Kabili just on the basis that it would diversify your portfolio. You know, instead of having two, um, you know, cell phone operators, uh, you can throw a bit of a bit of beer into the mix and get uh, a different re uh, expected return uh, uh, over time. And then lastly, Ucumba. Remember, Ucumba is invested in, in Motus. Motus is the largest uh, motor dealership in the country. So the value of um, the shares that uh, the, the DNE shares own is, is 2.07 billion. Sorry, the value of Motus sorry, not the value of the DNE shares, it's the value of Motors is 2.1 billion, debt of roughly 1.1 billion, not million. 
my apologies, that should be billion. And that was as at the last set of available financials. Um, so that leaves you with a um, estimated NAV of 1.3 billion or 35 Rand a share. So there's a fair value discount um, calculated at 24 and 70. And the share currently trades at 21 Rand 50 a share. So that's a 30% 13% discount to fair value and a 39% discount to net asset value. So there the verdict would be a buy because it's at a discount to both fair value and net asset value. So yeah, sorry, I, I, I think I put the slide together at Opus 11 last night. It, it shouldn't be 1.1. One three million is one point one three billion. My apologies for that. Okay, but yeah, you're still accumulate. You're still buying in at a discount to to both fair value and nav. So so this is one I would certainly look to start to start buying. So buy different to accumulate in that if you want to put a hundred thousand, you would you would front load your purchases there as opposed to accumulate where you would spread it out over time. And then just to remind everybody that there is that tip one share that you can buy. Tip one was traded or listed on ZARX, but looks like ZARX has gone under. Uh, it's now moved its listing to the Cape Town Stock Exchange, which is an OTC platform similar to uh, uh, easy, not easy equities, the other easy, uh, Equity Express. Uh, and where tip one is, is different is that they buy the public BE shares, but they also come in as a BE partner for companies that have BE shares that are only available either to their staff or to certain strategic partners, and they would look to buy um, into those deals as well. And, and then also where there are endowments, empowerment endowments uh, that are looking to, to liquidate and get some liquidity for, for some of their uh, empowerment shares. Okay, so this is where you can trade the various shares. So, on the JSEBE board, you can buy MTN, Zakele, Futi, Vodacom, Yebo, Yetu, Salbi, One, and Zenzele, Kabili. On Equity Express, uh, you can get Putumanati and Okamba, Two, And then on the Cape Town Stock Exchange, you can buy the Tip 1 share. And if you're in a stock fell you, and you're on that uh, stock feller app, you can also buy Tip 1 through the stock feller app as well. Okay, so just to wrap everything up, um, again, so the strategies are put forward, the various strategies based on where the shares are currently trading, um, but there is now one best investment. Obviously, the strongest convictions around the two buy uh, verdicts, um, but uh, yeah, the principle of diversification should still apply here. Do not invest money that you cannot afford to lose or that you need at short notice. Because these are illiquid shares, you're not always going to be able to get the value at short notice. You may have to offer a big discount to be able to get money out quickly. So that's obviously going to eat into your returns. There are no guarantees with these shares. You can lose money. As investors last year who were buying uh, who come back at 30 rand a share and got bought out at 15 rand or 14 rand 80. You know, you can lose money. Eum Schlaber and Schlumisa, they lost all their money. Um, gearing, it means volatility, but it also means en enhanced returns over time. Understand your, your current financial position. So you, you need to have the ba a balance sheet that as space for e-liquid assets that, that trade at a discount to their net asset values. 
So your balance sheet's got to be ready for that type of asset. And then invest for the long term. Particularly important when it comes to investing in broad-based BE shares, just given their expected return profile uh, over time. Great, and remember that you can actually build a quality diversified portfolio. So a dominant beer maker, dominant cell phone provider, dominant oil and chemicals, pretty much a, a um, what's the word, a monopoly on paid TV and sort of the largest car dealership uh, in the country. So that's a quality portfolio. It's a good portfolio that you, you're getting. And these companies will have their ups and downs. Great, just a reminder that this does not constitute advice. And yeah, you, I think you saw several inaccuracies in the presentation. Um, and yeah, this is our license number. Craig, Great, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's my presentation. Simon, I'm gonna hand back to you. Yeah, cool folks, if you've got some questions, drop them in. Uh, Craig, the one question is around uh, the um, uh, the old mutual, but I, it, it, your views in the scheme, but that is now closed and is now locked in for the next couple of years. So a bit mute perhaps. Uh, indeed. So uh, the scheme closed on the 24th of October and there's an in initial lock-in period of five years. So even if you wanted to buy in, however, if if the in the remote possibility that the scheme was undersubscribed, mm. um, remote possibility because it was a fairly small scheme, and at the halfway mark they already had thirty thousand applications. Oh wow! <laughs> um, there was a, a warehouse kind of facility that they were going to put together. So if it's undersubscribed, that warehouse would have gotten those sort of shares that were not subscribed for, and that would have presented an opportunity for people to go and buy. Uh, but I, I, I doubt that's going to be the case. We will we'll get news from a bullet seller in, in the next few weeks. Cool. Uh, folks, we're getting tons of questions, send them, uh, but keep sending. Uh, Malefi asked his favorite. I think Craig kind of answered that, a nice diverse portfolio. Adam's asking, remaining life of the... Uh, Putatomi Nati share scheme, how much longer has it still got to go? Well, Putuminati? Yeah. Now, Putuminati is an evergreen scheme. Okay, is it evergreen? Yeah. So okay. the debt was settled about five years ago. Um, so it's, it's just going to carry on trading. So there's no liquidity event. Okay. Um, and then question from Tabanio, the one you've answered, Old Mutual, uh, and he says the 30% uh, discount for fair value adequate given Sol BE1 trades at 40% discount. Yeah, so, so the 30% discount to NAV to get a fair value. Um, you know, how long is a piece of string? When, when it comes to determining what sort of discount you should apply, uh, if you look at e-liquid shares on the JSE, it's anywhere between kind of 20 and 30%. Uh, if you look at uh, private equity, they tend to apply about a 25% um, discount to, to, to the assets when they're valuing the assets because of the, the lack of liquidity. So that, that's the number we've chosen, and we believe that it, it adequately compensates for the lack of trading and for the gearing that's in the scheme. And there's risk inherent in gearing. So we would demand a discount on the net asset value. We, we, we'd never want to pay net asset value. Uh, we, we'd, we'd want to pay fair value. And then when the liquidity, if the liquidity improves, then you know, you'll see investors being prepared to to pay a small at a smaller discount, and their share price will increase. But the the Cecil one, so I'll be that discount's been as high as as seventy percent, yeah. and at times it's even traded at a premium, as I've said, to to NAV. So it's it's been very volatile. It's been incredibly wide range, but the average has been around thirty percent. 
Yeah, yeah, Adam, to your follow up there, it, it, it's around liquidity. It's not mandated. It just, uh, as Greg says, it's a little bit, uh, 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 it can be crazy at, at, at some point. Uh, question um, When will MTN uh, ZFB free of debt? I don't know if it'll be free of debt, but the scheme matures in November 2024. So it's two years' time. Okay, only two years' time. Uh, it depends on whether MTN can grow the dividend. Um, yeah, that, that's the big variable. Mm -hmm. And then also the MTN share price. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so, the, the, the two drivers. Mohammed's asking, uh, it's the same one. I mean, does it change? as the MTN, MTN share changes in value at all. I mean, as the MTN shares, it, it'll change, but there will be, to your point, some, some leverage effect almost. Yes, so, so the, the increase in the share price increases the value of the asset. Typically, you find that the debt levels tend to stay fairly constant mm -hmm. and, and they tend to decrease over time. So if you look at your, your, your mortgage bond, you know, the, the, you don't see wild swings on the value of your outstanding balance there. The cost of debt may go up and down, and it will cost you more to service that debt, so you may reduce it at a slower rate. Um, but, but yeah, if, if, if the share price goes up quite a lot, then suddenly your net asset value is, is quite high, and therefore your discount, your fair value, would also increase, and you should you should see the the share price increasing as well. Question around Nkomba, I assume that's uh, number two. What is its expiry? How much? How many more years to, does it have? Yeah, Ukamba two, I think, expires in June twenty five. Th that one was a fifteen year scheme. Oh wow! So that one really tested people's <laughs> patience. Um, <laughs> but but you could buy in at like four and five rand a share several years ago. Now it's a 20 rand a share. Um, it's, that's why I say, you know, long-term, take a long-term view, buy it at four rand, forget about it. But by the time it gets to the end of the 15 year period, you've got an asset that's gonna be worth north of 50, 70 rand a share. Um, and when you annualize that return, it, it, it'll be a, a pretty substantial return. Yeah. I mean, you get so, yeah, uh, that one is 2025. So it's only three years. It's okay. less than three years now. Less than three years. A, a couple of questions coming in various different ways. I'm going to sort of merge them together. And the answer is it's quite simple. Some of them, sort of, there's a lock in. And then post lock in, you, you, the, 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 the fund is the scheme is still there. It might be evergreen. It might still have some years to run. And the question is, you know, do you sell at the end of lock in? And I would suspect the answer is, it depends. <laughs> yes, so so there, there are usually three periods. There, there's a funding period, there's an empowerment period, mm -hmm. and there's a locking period. So the funding period refers to how long, you know, your pref share providers gave you to settle the debt, or to settle as much of the debt as possible. Okay, so there's a funding term, Sometimes that is aligned to the empowerment term. Mm -hmm. So with the initial year by year two, it was 10 year funding period, 10 year empowerment period, um, and a five year lock-in period. So the lock-in period is just simply, what's the period that I cannot trade these shares? Yeah. That's got nothing to do with funding, it's got nothing to do with empowerment. Um, with some of the schemes, there's no empowerment period. So the prevailing year by year two scheme, there's no empowerment period, but there's a funding funding term. Part of the debt rolls over, I think it's either next year or the year after. Um, so there, there's, there's, there's that happening. There's a bit of reinvestment risk, but it's not that big. Um, yeah. And at the end of the funding period, they may have to sell off a few shares to settle the debt completely. And then you, you're sitting in a Putumanati scenario where you've got this cash generative asset that's just spitting out big, big chunks of cash. And, you know, the share price by then should be a lot higher. 
Yeah, no, I take your point. Folks, we've hit time and I'm cognizant of everyone's time, Craig's especially, so I'm just gonna take the last one. It's a comment from Adam, which is, shouldn't investors first take a view on the underlying company? Uh, short answer, absolutely. If you think the company's an absolute horror, you don't want to invest in it, whether it's BEE or traditional or discount, you don't want to own bad companies. That, that I think we can agree is rule one. Uh, Craig Gratage, uh, Gratage Mahora Investments, GMI, really appreciate the time and, and your insights on, on BE. Uh, thanks very much, ladies and gents. Really appreciate all of your time this evening. We'll see you back uh, 1 December, even virtual, or if you're in the Greater Joburg, uh, come to the JC. We'll be in Santon for a live power hour. Craig, thanks very much, man. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, everybody.